Dear students, in this lecture, we will look into more details of Bayesian inference of linear regression and then going to maximum likelihood estimate to estimate parameters in new way. So, uh, previously we have looked at linear regression models where our goal is to determine what is the parameter vector theta and in case of univariate regression, we are interested to find theta 1 and theta 2 which is simply slope and intercept and in case of multivariate regression our objective would be to find theta 1 up to theta n minus 1 and this would correspond to intercept and these would be coefficient of the n dimensions that we would be dealing with n minus 1 dimensions that we would be dealing with so if this is intercept these would be the corresponding coefficients however there is one more interpretation of identifying theta so we already looked at a couple of methods so we can determine theta using ordinary least square which was our video one and then we also looked at uh, gradient descent algorithm which was our video 2.2 this was 2.1 and today in 2.3 we are going to look into maximum likelihood estimate but before we go to maximum likelihood estimate i wanted to give you an intuition behind so why we are uh, looking at from from this likelihood perspective and how it fits in the Bayesian scheme. So if you remember, we learned that probability of theta for given x vector can be written in base form as probability of x vector given theta vector times probability of theta vector upon probability of x vector, which is simply Bayes rule. So one of my students actually pointed me to one very interesting video on more of a physical intuition behind this Bayes theorem which I will put in the link so please feel free to go through it however I am not covering that in uh, that intuition here in detail but you can refer to video uh, segments one to understand what this Bayes theorem is at least mathematically. Alright so if this is probability of theta given x let us move to uh, what this Bayesian gives us. So it says that if probability of theta given x is, is proportional to likelihood, do you remember this term is likelihood? We said this is equal to prior and this is equal to evidence. Now in Bayes, Bayesian uh, regression learning, we push that idea that, that our theta is not a point estimate. All the methods that we have been dealing with, they give us the point estimates. However, Bayesian says that let us not consider this theta to be a point estimate. This theta itself could be a probability distribution. So there could be some probability distribution given some data that we have seen. So this is conditional upon the data sets that we have seen. And uh, here y would also be there and some x would be there. So it is gives us the probability distribution of theta conditional upon data sets. So there is no right or wrong answer. There is no specific point value associated with, with, the, with the value of, of theta. And we look at what is the probability of occurrence of given theta. And based on that, we go for the linear uh, regression and come up with the prediction intervals based on the distribution itself because we know that in case of normal distribution for example probability of finding theta around mean would be the highest so we can always look at the one plus minus sigma from mean. Now the challenge here is that determining these three quantities is required if we want to fully determine this probability. Now the challenge the, the bigger challenge here is we can solve for this as uh, likelihood which we are going to do in this video prior is based on our belief about that particular theta we could have informed prior or unformed prior based on the experience that we have with dealing with that data or sometimes we deal with the with with the simple form that is we want to have the 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 distributions preserved so we say that if prior is coming from normal distribution and uh, probability of x vector given theta vector is also normally distributed we can surely say that probability of theta vector given x vector would also be normally distributed and such kind of priors are called as conjugate priors so that the distributions are conserved and they offer the mathematical convenience however the biggest challenge in bayesian linear regression is determination of this denominator because identifying evidence is hard we have to integrate 
over all the possible values of theta to obtain the estimate of probability of x vector which makes it computationally challenging. However, in case of applied data sciences, Bayesian linear regression and solving its exact mathematical form is beyond the scope but I will post a link to one excellent book on mathematics of machine learning in the comments and you can refer to its page 303, 303 if you are interested into its mathematics. Now, why I am introducing this? Because here there is a term which is called as likelihood and I wanted to give you more intuition about this likelihood because it would be directly used when we will go to model selection and identifying which model is better than the other. So our focus of this discussion would be looking into the maximum likelihood estimate for linear regression. Now in previous videos, we looked at the maximum likelihood estimates for distributions. So if you recall, we had this example of normal distribution that we said that f of x uh, for, can be written as 1 upon root 2 pi sigma square e raised to power minus x minus mu square upon 2 sigma square and we used maximum likelihood approach that is what is the probability of observing certain data set for certain theta and we call this as a likelihood of uh, theta given x vector and we maximized it and equated it to 0 by equating it to 0 and calculated the values of theta vector. So you can refer to videos 1 in this particular uh, uh, playlist to, get to, to revise what I am mentioning here and we will get up with the point estimate. But there are two things. First of all, we need to know that what are the, what is the underlying distribution and once we know the distribution, we have to estimate the parameters of the distribution. However, in case of linear regression, we are not simply interested to find the parameters of distribution. We are interested to find what is the value of regression parameters or what is the value of my theta vector, which is theta 1, theta 2 in case of univariate regression and theta 1 up to theta n minus 1 and theta n where again this corresponds to coefficients and this corresponds to the intercept. So my challenge is to find these thetas in case of linear regression to explain my model or I am specifically interested to explain why uh, I am interested to find the equation of y or y estimate in form of theta and product of x. So if this is theta and this is my x vector so and, and uh, x matrix and this is what I am interested in. Uh, this is also a vector. So I am interested to find this theta vector. Now here to progress ahead we make two kind of assumptions. First assumption is that our, if we have in case of univariate regression we have x here and we have y here and we will have some distribution here. Right? So these points would be scattered all over the place and assuming that y and x they are linearly correlated we could have some relation something like this. So we assume that our y is, so this is an assumption that our y is coming from normal distribution and there are n ways to check whether this assumption holds true or not and we will cover them in later videos but right now we assume that it is coming from normal distribution. Now we have to determine the functional form of its mean and sigma square in terms of thetas so that we can actually estimate those thetas. So here we will take help of some equation which we have seen many times that our y can be written as theta vector times x plus some error epsilon and we further assume that our errors in a nicely fit model it should be a normally distributed with some zero mean and some defined variance which we say as sigma square. Now using this if we have to estimate what is the expected value of, of y we can say that expected value of y is equal to expected value of theta times x because this is y hat or the best fit line plus expected value of epsilon. So expected value of y would be expected value of theta x plus expected value of epsilon should be equal to 0 because it is coming from normal distribution with 0 mean 
How and this appears to be a constant because if you multiply theta vector with x vector, there is no uncertainty associated with that because here we are saying that x its x is an independent variable. You observe x and hence you are making prediction. And in case of point estimates, whenever we are going for point estimates of theta, we assume no uncertainty again. So expected value of y is simply theta times x. And we know that expected value of y can also be written as mu of y and that should be equal to theta times x. Now you see that we have something to plug in here that at least we have figured it out that this should be equal to theta times x. Now second question comes what is the variance. Again we have we use the same relation that our y is equal to theta times x plus epsilon and we take the variance on both sides. So variance uh, I will use the variance operator here. We know that variance of y should be equal to variance of theta x plus variance of epsilon. Again, this is constant. So the con variance of constant is equal to zero. And we know that variance of noise in this case is equal to sigma square. So our variance of y becomes sigma square, which is same as the variance of noise. So we will write this variance of, of y as variance of noise. So just to make it clear, this is what how we are writing it. So this is variance of noise to avoid the confusion with notations. Okay. Now this is clear. We know that variance of y, variance of x, and we have already assumed that this is coming from normal distribution. Then our problem becomes a little bit easier. That is, let us try to first of all visualize it that what it means that what I've just said. So if you look at this interpretation, or visualization. So if this is x, this is y, we are saying that each y is normally distributed and its mean, its mean is corresponds to whatever is the value of this particular theta times x at that particular point because you said that mean is equal to theta times x. So at x1, my best estimate of mean would be theta times x1. So we go here, we go here and this would be the best estimate of mean, right? Similarly at x2, the best estimate of, of mean for this distribution would be theta times x2. Best distribution would be theta times x3. So the, the key difference here with comparison to the estimation of parameters of distribution versus estimation of parameters of linear regression using maximum likelihood estimate is that here mean is constantly changing because there is exists a trend here. But here with this notation, we should be fine and you will just see that how we arrive at the, the mathematical conclusion of it. So we can write that probability of observing certain y given theta vector is equal to likelihood of theta and variance given x vector and this should be equal to product over n samples upon 1 upon 2 pi sigma square e raised to power minus y i minus mu square upon 2 sigma square. We know that this sigma square can be replaced by uh, by sigma epsilon and this mu can be replaced by w x. So we will replace this y by uh, mu by w x as we have already discussed or theta times x. So weights are thetas in our case and this is of course vector and x is a matrix. Now upon solving this can we write this as 1 upon 2 pi sigma epsilon square raised to power n because this is our multiplication operator e raised to power this would become summation because we are multiplying e raised to power something and hence it could be expressed as summation y minus theta x square upon 2 sigma square and now if we take log on both sides we would be dealing with log likelihood of observing y for given theta vector and <coughs> this can be written as minus n by 2 ln 2 pi minus n by 2 ln sigma square minus y minus wx transpose 
y minus oh, sorry theta x here we are using thetas instead of weights minus theta x and y minus theta x remember here whenever we are dealing with squares and we are dealing with vectors at matrices we already saw in previous example that it uh, in, in the case of ordinary least square estimates it's always better to take the product of transpose with the original vector to get a square right so that's why i'm not writing it directly as a square but i'm writing as a transpose multiplied by the matrix itself divided by 2 sigma square and now to determine what is the value of our parameter theta what we will do we will take the differentiation of our log likelihood which is function of theta with respect to theta and equate it to zero and when we do that we end up with the mathematical formulation upon 2 sigma square 0 minus 2x transpose y plus 2x transpose x times w equal to 0 which implies our weight or uh, again i'm just confusing you guys in notation so this should be theta this theta should be equal to x transpose x minus 1 x transpose y so wherever you see weight or theta they are interchangeable really in the language of linear regression but here since we are dealing with theta as weight vector we end up with theta is x transpose x inverse x transpose y and in case of uh, multivariate regression uh, our x itself can be written as 1 1 1 x 1 1 x 1 2 up to x 1 k and here we can have it as or uh, uh, yes x 1 k and here we can have it up to x n 1 up to x n k if we have k parameters to de determine so we have k parameters coming just from x plus 1 coming from this row with all 1 which we call as the term representing intercept or bias so 1 plus k parameters and we have n samples which are represented by these rows right so and hence this this particular form is exactly similar to what we observed in OLS applied to vector notation which again you can refer to videos recorded just before this so the the thing is even if we change the interpretation from OLS to regression uh, to, to maximum likelihood estimate of regression our values of weights are not changing and we are ending up with the point estimates of these thetas now why we introduce this in an applied course you will you might have encountered these terms or you will see later when we will go to programming that we generally use the words like AIC and BIC which are information criteria based measure to determine which model we should select which model we should select and this these criteria try to balance the complexity with accuracy you can have highly complex model with less with 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 great accuracy versus you can have little bit simpler model with lesser accuracy okan's razor principle says that you should always go with a simpler model if the performance is comparative because simpler models are less prone to overfitting they are more intuitive and self explanatory and that is where this complexity versus accuracy trade-off becomes important and we use AIC and BIC criteria to identify which model we should go with. And these AIC and BIC criteria, they typically depend upon the number of parameters and log likelihood of observation of that particular function with respect to the theta that we have selected and that's where we would be using this log likelihood interpretation of the regression. Finally, wait is over and in the next video we will go to programming exercise where I will introduce these problems of linear regression using scikit-learn and we will work on toy data as well as real data in our next video.